Hey everyone, and welcome to Sasquatch Theory. In this episode, I interview Keith from Alabama. He claims he has had several Bigfoot encounters while out in the brush and some encounters on a piece of land he was investigating with a property owner. I recently went back out to the killing fields with a few of my friends. Although it was extremely hot and humid, we pushed through the annoyance of the heat to pursue the Sasquatch in hopes of running across the local clan at the current river conservation area. We experienced some interesting activity and it lined up with what the property owner has been experiencing lately. I don't want to give away too much, but we did go there and it did seem to be fairly active. It was a lot of little things that added up and um, I don't think it was coincidence. It was very hard to document the activity just because we'd be talking or unloading stuff and then we'd hear something and the camera wouldn't be rolling, but that's how it goes. And um, I just want to let you guys know that I filmed as much as possible, so look out for that in the near future. It should be out in about two weeks on the regular channel, and um, yeah, this coming Sunday I'm going to release Williams Part 2 interview, so for those of you that were in interested in that, be on the lookout. Alright guys, let's dive into our next Bigfoot encounter from the state of Alabama. Hey Keith, welcome to Sasquatch Theory. It's a pleasure to have you on the show today. How are you doing? Uh, so far, so good. Just woke up, but uh, I'm okay. Well, good to hear. You have some experiences from the Alabama area. If you would, could you walk me through all of that and explain your encounters, how they happened, and what you saw? Sure. Um, I moved to Alabama about 16 years ago. Um, you know, when I was about 44 mm -hmm. but prior to moving to alabama um you know i played in the woods a lot especially in the everglades quite a bit and i lived close to the everglades group you know born and raised until i moved to alabama so i was always tracking up there getting into trouble but uh i remember as a kid i was like four years old and uh looking out the front windows of the living room and right at the bottom right corner, which was low to the ground, I saw, you know, as a four-year-old, I saw a monster in the window. And it stuck with me. I'll never forget it. And it was waving at me, you know, had its hand out, bringing it towards itself, waving at me like, come outside, come outside. And this was, if I recall, it was at night. And I yelled to my mother, there's a monster at the window. There's a monster at the window. And she, you know, I can remember this because it was a little terrifying. <laughs> it's a pretty real monster. But she waved it off and uh, didn't believe me and never even looked, you know. So mm -hmm. that was my very first experience, if it was real. And I believe it was because it never left my mind, you know. So that's how it started. Um, going from there on i mean um like i said i used to run up to the everglades a lot do some camping up there um at, there was one point in my life where my buddies and i once we became of age we all went out and got guns like fools and we had it in our heads that it was okay to go out to the everglades and what we would do is put two of us up on the front of the hood driving down the dirt roads back there and each one had a gun. <laughs> and, uh, basically, if the birds stirred, you would take them out. <laughs> we were horrible kids. <laughs> but um, I remember we were doing that one day. And we stopped. Someone wanted to see the bird they shot because it fell on the dirt road. So we stopped. And we got out. We're looking. And um, I don't know if you've been to the Everglades, but the woods there are really thick. You know, a lot of viney stuff. You can't see through it. You know, from the dirt road into the woods, you might be able to see two or three feet is all, maybe five feet in some spots. But um, as we were stopped there, something was walking up on us. You could hear it, definitely bipedal. And it's like we had heard about Bigfoot, 
you know, and um, there were reports you would hear about them. So it was in our mind, like his Bigfoot walking up on us and uh, being the dumb kids we were, you know, we were yelling at this thing, you know, if you walk any closer, we're going to shoot you, you know, in case it was a person. And um, like I said, we were bad kids. Well, this thing kept walking up and I, I would guess it got within 10 feet. Um, it sounded that way anyhow to us. And uh, we agreed, let's open up on this thing. And we just blasted the woods and uh, got the hell out of there. <laughs> Uh, not real proud of that story, but that happened. Um, another time we were camping, a uh, new spot we'd never been to. By that time, I had bought an old Class C, you know, barely ran, had to keep putting transmission fluid in it, that kind of Class C. And um, we ended up at a spot. We didn't know really much about the spot, but we got there and, you know, there was all kinds of trails and whatnot leading out, and we were finding pots and pans and come to find out it was a spot people go to hunt at and they leave their stuff behind they hide it here and there but uh we ended up spending the night there and um some people came out and yelled at us you know you're in my hunting spot you need to get out of here and so we kind of had some go rounds with those folks but uh, we stayed but in the morning when we got up we had found some prints around the camper and uh it looked like big footprints so we were scratching our heads but we weren't really like worried about it you know i don't know why but we weren't so so that happened yeah. as well um but then you know a long time passed i never had any more experiences i moved to alabama and uh living in alabama you know quite an adjustment things are different here um but um, I took a job. It was a sales job. And uh, I was paired up with another guy. And both of us were just, you know, we didn't take the job serious because it wasn't much of a job. And uh, part of the job was to go out looking for new customers in the whole central Alabama area. And basically, we would go out and just ride around because we would get calls from new customers. We didn't worry about it too much, trying to find new ones. We were always out in the country riding around, just talking and joking. And we were riding one day and, I'm, you know, I'm the passenger and it's rural, real rural. And I'm kind of staring out the window, just looking at the countryside. And we passed a, a little side road, dirt road that came off the road we were traveling. And, you know, the metal culverts that go underneath the drainage culverts. There was something sitting curled up next to the culvert, like almost hiding, you know, as we drove by. And I saw this thing, and the best way I can describe it is it looked like an orangutan. And I just, my mind didn't process that. It's like, that's impossible. And I never even told the guy I was riding with nothing, you know, because he would have laughed his head off. So I saw this thing in the drainage ditch, and, um, you know, at that point, I wasn't really big on is Bigfoot real or not yet. And, you know, so that just was one of those things that I saw. Might have been there, might not have been. I don't know, but my mind saw it. So, um, and then a lot of time passed, you know, and I ended up on YouTube pretty much full time. I went down the rabbit hole of uh, Bigfoot and, uh, watching all the Bigfoot videos and trying to learn as much as I could. And I stumbled across a, uh, a guy posting on YouTube. He was relatively close to me. You know, I'm in Montgomery. He was about an hour away, uh, down around where they call it the Bigfoot capital of Alabama, Evergreen. He's down in that area. And his videos, you know, they looked pretty real, but it seemed like everything was blurry. And uh, I'll get to that. But anyhow, I contacted him through his email and said, hey, I'm a researcher. <laughs> you know, I called myself a researcher just to hope to get my foot in the door with him. And I said, oh, I would like to come down. I've never seen one. And if you have that many, you know, you're my best bet. Help me out. And surprisingly, he said, come on down. And I couldn't believe it. I packed up my camper and 
he's way out in the country and uh, I got lost getting there. But uh, once I got there, you know, I got my camper set up. It's a little A-frame job. And as soon as I set that thing up, he says, come on. And, I'm, you know, I didn't know what was going on. I just met him. Well, I start following him. And he's, he's down a long dirt road, you know. And uh, he's walking up the dirt road. And all of a sudden, he peels into the woods. And I go after. And uh, he wants to show me all this stuff back there. It's structures, broken off trees, trees that are jammed down into the ground. He's, he's telling me, try to pull that out, try to pull that out, you know, things like that. And, uh, you know, you can see footprints, you can see where they've sat on the ground um, with some trash that they had recovered from his burn pit, um, you know, food wrappings and whatnot. And they had sat there and licked them clean or whatnot. But anyhow, so he's still walking me around back there, and I am in total amazement because, you know, I had seen some stuff on my own going out looking, you know, or at least questionable stuff that I thought, well, this looks like Bigfoot stuff. But uh, his property, I'm like, I was just blown away. It's like there's no way this man could fake all this if he was faking it, you know, faking stuff and posting and whatnot like I think some people might do. So, you know, my eyes were just so wide open. And um, he takes me further into the woods, deeper. And I heard it sounded like somebody running through the leaves about six footsteps. And I said, hey, did you hear that? And he said, what? He didn't hear anything. But to me, it was loud and clear. So I said, you know, I heard somebody running. And he went, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. You know? But we kept on, and it wasn't 30 seconds, and I saw this black thing. I mean black. It was so black. I've never seen black that black. But it was um, down in a ravine, like a a, a dried uh, creek bed or whatnot, with its head popped up. You know, you could see about the shoulders up. And I asked him, I said, is that one? <laughs> and he went, oh, boy. He says, Bubba, we got to get out of here because he's he's not comfortable with them at all. He's, you know, he's had some things happen to where he's still a little scared of them. And I didn't want to go. I wanted to, like, you know, keep watching it. And um, he yelled at the thing. OK, we're getting out of here. And I, you know, I'm like, oh, no, you know, finally I get to see one, you know, but um. I remembered at least I had my cell phone. So I snapped a picture of it. And of course, like all the Bigfoot pictures, I was a little shaky and it was about 120 feet away. So I didn't get a good picture, but um, I'm still staring at this thing and it took a step up towards us. So now you can see it about belly button up and it went, (laughs) you know, like a, not like a dog bark, but a, a gruff, you know, and I just, I was blown away. I just thought, oh my God, my life's complete. I got to see one and it spoke to me, you know. And um, I asked him, you know, we got out of the woods. He wanted to get out of there quick. As soon as we got out, he high-fived me. You know, he was so excited that we actually got to see one in the daytime. Because he said, you know, he only sees them at night down there. So that was kind of special, I guess. He was more excited than I was, it seemed. But... um you know, I, I had said, oh, my God, and it spoke to us. And he went, what? I didn't hear it. So he didn't hear the running. He didn't hear it speak to us. Um, and I think he's got good hearing. I don't know how that happened. But um, I ended up spending um, two nights down there. And, um, you know, he took me back into the woods again. And we saw a lot more evidence. It's just crazy the amount of evidence. I mean, they're living right there right next to him and uh you know they they torment him a little they come up and tap on you know his residence and run off again and and they've they've done some other things that you know are a little scary but um so i spent two nights there and you know the first night i thought oh my god they're going to come up to the camper and you know 
I was a little freaked out because it's like, are they real or not? And then I'd seen one, so now I know they're real. And now it's like, what if these things do come to my camper? You know, it's like I wanted it, but I was scared. So uh, yeah. the first night went by and nothing happened. You know, you could hear them. You could hear them howling like to each other. Um, similar to, you know, how coyotes howl. So a lot of that was going on. But um, we sat around the fire, it, you know, his burn pit, I'll call it, but it's nice little structure he made. And we're sitting around there and you could just hear them. They were so close because from the burn pit to the wood line is 50 feet maybe. And you could just hear them walking. You know, they had to have been watching us curious and whatnot. Um, and it's kind of an L shape. You know, he's got his home back there in the corner, so to speak. And it's kind of an L shaped wood line. And so, you know, we were hearing them there to my left. But off to the right, I saw a humongous one. He was outside the wood line, walking like towards the back of his residence. Um, so I caught a glimpse of that. He had to have been eight feet. You know, I didn't get it clear. Like you, you could see the shadow of him. You know, there was a little bit of moonlight, starlight, whatnot. So, so that was exciting too. But um, you know, a couple nights there, and I ended up my battery went dead. In the camper, everything went dead. I had a, you know, a house battery, but I also had one of those big battery packs, and I couldn't get juice out of either one on the second night, and that was nuts. So, um, you know, I packed up early uh, to come home. I got home, and somehow everything worked again, and um, that was a little odd. I'm not a believer in all the foo foo stuff. You know, that they can drain batteries. Maybe they can, but I'm just not a believer in it. But uh, everything worked when I got home. <laughs> so that was kind of wild, you know. Um, and, and, you know, since that happened, he's he's allowed me to come back a few times. And, and I brought a buddy with me one time who was a non-believer. And uh, he took me in a different part of the woods. And we actually came across... He called it the killing field, you know, coincidence, right? Um, but it was deer carcasses, and you could see where they were bent, like they'd been wrapped around trees and their legs broken. Um, each one of them was the same, you know. So we were walking through there, and um, we came across a piece of honeycomb next to a hole in the ground. <laughs> We we're like, well, that's pretty weird, too. You know, what lives down the hole? And was it eating the honeycomb? How did it get it? And right about then, we just smelled this horrific smell. It was so bad. And, you know, I was like, what is that? Is it coming from the hole? And he looked at me and he went, Bubba, what do you think that is? And it dawned on me. Oh, my God. We're downwind of a Bigfoot. And it's got to be pretty close. But. We we carried on and we got up on top of a crest, the three of us, and he had brought a uh, thermal that he borrowed. Uh, you know, my friend that lives there, he uh, he had a thermal for about a week or so. And he gave it to my buddy. He said, "Do a 360 while we're up here," and he did that 360, and you could see a dang Bigfoot. He's about, you know, he was a good piece from us. He's 500 feet maybe. But you could see him clear as day. There's no doubt about it. And uh, so he's, my buddy's looking at this thing through the thermal. And he's, now it just clicked. Oh, my God. This is all real. You know, there's one on the thermal. And I got to look at it. And it had started moving by that point. And the guy that owns the property down there, by the time he got to the thermal to have a look, it had gone into uh, where you couldn't see it. I don't know where it went. but you couldn't see it in the thermal anymore. So that was kind of exciting. So my buddy's now a believer. Thank God I got somebody, you know, um, to go with me places, you know, look for them. Since my time's down at my buddy's property, you know, that got me more excited to go out on my own and look for these things, knowing 100% now that they're real. So I use Google Maps a lot, you know, and after listening, to so many people that are 
that were already in the Bigfoot world, you know, gathering all the information I can from YouTube, including yourself. Um, so I know kind of the places to go and look. And I've, I've found other places. One of them is actually really close. You know, it's a 10 minute ride in my car and I've been going there and I'm, I'm finding footprints um, in a place. It's, it's so close to the road. It's in a neighborhood, you know, uh, not a very populated neighborhood, but uh, going down their paved road to get to their houses. You know, there's this spot. It's 20 feet from the road, but between this spot and the road, there's no other foliage. And it's it's one of these short trees or it's a bush, but it kind of forms a circle of limbs around the outside that come down to the ground. But you can get in the middle of it. You can like climb into it. It's like a dome tent is the best way I can describe it. So I checked that out and, you know, there were footprints all around it, of course. That's what led me to it. But uh, looking inside, you can just see where it is so pressed down. And it would, you know, and I thought, well, shoot, they could sit in here and just watch everything going on. Cars going by, kids riding bikes, you know. But um, it was there. And further back, you know, I came to other areas where it looked like they had bedded down. Now, there are deer and there's coyotes in the area. And I may have been looking at nothing more than, you know, deer bedding, but because of all the other things I saw, you know, structures, uh, tree breaks and whatnot, I just, I kind of put the two together like this is where they're sleeping. And, uh, you know, beyond that, um, what else here? Let's see. I did go on a camp out. Oh, wait a minute. Let me back up. Um, you know, I was with my buddy. We were headed to Georgia to buy lottery tickets. <laughs> so we're racing as fast as we can to get this done. And, uh, you know, I'm telling him, we'll look down every place you see power lines cutting through the woods. Look down there. And uh, we did actually see it look like a man. Um, you know, we got to see it from head to toe, but it was completely black. You know, walking on one of those cleared areas and but we were flying so we were like that had to be one there's nothing no one else would be out in the woods like that dressed completely in black you know so that was kind of neat seeing that but um i went out on a uh, camp out recently i joined a, a club online a group excuse me i joined a group online here in alabama um i don't want to mention the group because uh, I ended up unjoining it. But uh, before I unjoined it, I went on a uh, group camp out. And there were about 50 of us, including my buddy down south that has him living on his property. He was there. So that was nice. I knew somebody at least. Uh, but I went on that camp out. And uh, that was up in central Alabama, north of me, uh, about an hour deep in the woods. It was a, uh, a protected area, I guess you would call it. Uh, you can't hunt back there. So, um, you know, keep in Alabama natural, you know, a place that they can't bulldoze or hunt or anything. So we were really deep in the woods. But um, during that two-night stay, uh, there's a dirt road that goes further back with a gate across it. You can't drive down it. So... Uh, Everyone was wanting to walk down that dirt road, and I took my turn. And um, it's a long road, but I ended up stopping and sitting on a log. I was taking a breather, and I heard a whack on a tree behind me about 100 feet. And I went, oh, my God, they are here. That's cool. And others in the group um, had talked about they saw eye shine at night. And one guy was going around on day two saying, were you up early? Were you up early? You know? This is like 5 a.m. He said something walked by my tent at 5 a.m. So he thinks it was one of them. But um, I've since unjoined myself from that group because the, uh, the guy that hosts the group, he's very opinionated. He says, if you believe this or believe that, leave my group regarding Bigfoot. I went, well, that's just, you know, whether I do or not, it's not very nice. 
I thought. And so I am enjoying that. And I think I do better on my own. I don't need to belong to a group. So um, I just went back to the very same place. I thought, well, I'll have better luck. And I took my buddy with me, my new believer buddy. He was excited about going there. So we went there and everything had changed. Uh, the leaves have fallen now. So it was green when I was there the last time. Um, but everything had fallen. And I told him, I said, they're not going to come near us. They don't have any cover. And so we spent the first day and night there and nothing. I mean, you could barely hear a bird or a squirrel. There was just nothing out there. But um, so the second day came around and we were like, well, this is a total flop, absolute flop, you know, wasted trip. And uh, the nightfall came and uh, we're sitting inside the camper. You know, I've got a TV in this thing. So we're sitting there just watching TV and it wasn't very cold. So and we both smoke. So we had the windows open. And all of a sudden we heard this whistle right outside the window. I mean, it sounded like someone standing two feet from the window, just as loud as can be a whistle. Of course, it probably wasn't two feet from the window, but it was loud. And we looked at each other like, oh, my God, <laughs> you know, this is crazy. So uh, he grabbed the thermal and he's it's you know, we're both still inside the camper and it's got a big window slide window. And he's looking outside through the screen with the thermal. He doesn't want to go outside, of course, thinking it's that close. So we're both standing at the window. I'm trying to get a look at the thermal, what he's doing. And uh, right then, I've never heard a foot stomp before. You know, I've heard about them. But there were five consecutive foot stomps. And I mean loud. You know, just boom, 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 you know. And I looked at him like, oh, my God. And he said, what? I said, the foot stomps. He said, I didn't hear them. And I'm standing there like, how can I hear these things? And you didn't hear that. You're at the window with me. But um, so that was kind of crazy, you know. And uh, we ended up going outside with the thermal. Nothing. We couldn't see anything, you know. And it's like, where could it go that fast? You know, especially with all the leaves on the ground, you would hear it running, you would think. But uh, we just, we couldn't see anything out there. And, oh, the first night, as soon as we turned the lights out to go to sleep, both of us heard it sounded like things being thrown at the camper about three times. And then the second night, you know, after the thermal and whatnot, hearing the whistle and all that, same thing. You know, we turn the lights out, go to sleep. Things are being thrown at the camper. Well, that was kind of wild. So that's that's been my experiences so far, and I'm hoping to have a lot more of them. Yeah, you've had quite a few experiences and a handful of encounters. Uh, yeah, it's I don't understand. It's like you know, I hear about people spending years looking for them and never even seeing one. You know, they see the evidence which, you know, I've seen plenty of now that I know what to look for. But they don't yeah. even have an encounter. So I kind of feel fortunate. Uh, my buddy down south, you know, you know, talking about me seeing one in the daytime. He said, that's one in a billion. That's just one in a billion, which, you know, he's exaggerating. But it was kind of special. A lot of fun. Yeah. So the best visual you got of the creature was at the farmer's property down in that creek bed? Well, he's not a farmer, but yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, as it, it's funny, it was 120 feet away, and if it would have been a person, you would be able to at least see some features on their face. But this thing was just so black, you couldn't see any features, just the mass of it, you know? Mm -hmm. It was, yeah. it was just mind boggling. Now also on his property, he has those, the ones that it, I'm sorry, it looked like a gorilla to me, the way it was shaped and the sound it made and whatnot. Um, it looked like a gorilla, but he's got uh, proof pictures and he's shown them to me. He hasn't posted, says he never will. But he's got another kind on his property. And to me, they look like American Indians. They're that human looking. 
Um, they're not covered in fur. Their noses come to a point, and they just, to me, they look like people. It's it's crazy. He said he doesn't see them as often as the other ones, but they are there. So he's got two different kinds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard of there being different types. I mean, from my personal experience and encounters, I think they belong to the same family group. They just look different depending you know, some look more primate and some look more human and some yeah. are in between. Yeah, I'm opinion. not sure. You know, I've got my opinions about it all, of course, like everyone, but I'm, of course, I'm not sure. It's uh, strange. Yeah, yeah. Really that'd be strange. wild to find out that there's like Bigfoot and then there's like a separation between them, you know, being more primate and hominid-like and the other ones being more man-like and you know, yeah. almost harder to, to distinguish between the two. Yeah. It's, it's, it's mind boggling. It's just mind boggling. So. Yeah. So have you got a good look at one up close? I know you passed by the one that was in that culvert in the ditch, <laughs> but you said well, you weren't sure. Yeah. I mean, that one to me looked like an orangutan, you know, it was colored like an orangutan. Um, and I mean, it, that's what it reminded me of monkey for sure, you know, monkey type. Um, but yeah, it didn't look human at yeah. all. Yeah. So going back to the man's property, um, can you describe the structures that you found and what do you think they mean? Well, um, a lot of breakage like exactly where he took me in. Of course, he's been back there before. He knew where to take me, but he took me to a spot. Um, it was probably no more than 50 feet from his dirt road leading in on the property. And it looked like a grenade had gone off. I mean, they had just busted everything back there. And some of it was stuck up in the trees, 15 feet straight across, like a whole uh, sapling. You know, it had to be 15 feet long and three inches around and just stuck horizontally into the treetops up there. And it's like, there's no way that could get there by itself. You know, um, a lot of just breakage, crazy breakage. There were some leanings, you know, where some had been piled up, not looking like a teepee, but just piled up kind of, you know, in a triangle, but not a complete TP. Um, and then there was one uh, tree that was about five inches around that had been broken off and then jammed into the ground. He, he had tried to pull it out, obviously, because he said to me, why don't you give that a try, see if you can get it out of the ground. And it was so far in there, there was no way it was coming out. It's just crazy stuff. Um, butt prints you know the butt prints you could clearly make the outline of where they had sat around next to each other licking the you know the food wrappers from his burn pit it was crazy just crazy back there lots of footprints tons of footprints and did you document the evidence and take photos or videos on that trip on that day no um i was trying to be a good guest and he pretty much had my attention the whole time I was there, wanting to talk to me about them, telling stories, showing me pictures, videos. And I really didn't have much time to myself. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. And when I take my, when I take people to my areas, I don't expect them just to start snapping photos. Like, you know, I'm going to show yeah. them first and then you can do whatever you want kind of deal. Yeah. No, he, he kind of kept me busy, which was fine. I enjoyed being there and so appreciative. Um, you know, I did go back uh, and document some stuff after that trip on another trip. Um, oh, he actually, he found a uh, hut. It looked, it was shaped like an igloo, probably five feet tall is all, and maybe six feet across, but it had, a, and it was woven together and it had a little opening. And I say little, I would guess probably two and a half, three feet. And you could see inside 
something had been laying in there. And, um, oh, that trip, he had said, bring a dust buster. And I couldn't figure out why, but it, you know, he said, wave the dust buster across the inside of that thing. And sure enough, um, I got a hair out of it and, uh, looked at that under a microscope. And it was like, everyone says clear with no medulla, is it called? So that was, uh, that was fun as well. Yeah. yeah, I took, yeah. Took what did the hair, sure. what did the hair look like to the physical eye? Like, was it brown or black? It was dark, real dark. Um, and it just, it looked like a human hair almost. Um, it was probably about four inches long, but it was straight, you know, like a human hair, not, not, um, curly or whatnot. Yeah. And did you guys use, um, a microscope that allowed you to see the medulla or whatever it's called? Yeah. Um, a little cheap microscope off Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Um, ordered so, that so um, we could look at it. Yeah. Yeah. That's neat. And I wanted to ask, did the property owner, did the parcel sit at the very end of the road? Like, was it, you know, kind of well, like the last property on the road kind of deal? Well, actually, it's quite a bit of acreage that him and his family owns. And um, the family lives on the property as well. It's one dirt road leading back through many of acres. And along the way, his family has residences back there. Um, there's probably three other people back there besides him altogether. Um, and he's at the very end. He was the last one to come in and build, so to speak. He cleared out um, quite a bit of, you know, trees and uh, put his home in there at the very end. Yeah. Well, when you were describing, you know, your experience there, I was like, man, is he talking about the same place that I went to? <laughs> really? You've been yeah, to Alabama? No, um, the Killing Fields episode that I did with oh. the farmer. Oh, shoot. I thought maybe got you were a, one of the folks that uh, he's invited down. No, no. Um, he's the farmer that I interviewed. He's got um, probably like 200 acres, and he lives at the end of the road, and he's been finding yeah. all kinds of deer with their necks twisted. And yeah. Well, it reminded me a lot of that story. Yeah, he doesn't have... 200 acres he's got quite a few you know i'm yeah. trying to keep him as anonymous as i can um that's fine but um has one he had any encounters himself pardon me has he seen him prior to you being there oh my god yes mm -hmm. oh tons tons when he first got there um he tells the story that all the people that live on the property did not know that they were there. And then he came in and like I said, he cleared off a chunk of woods and put his home in there. It's a mobile home. And he had things happening. I'm trying to remember what he told me, but him and his brother live in the mobile home. Um, and I forgot, he told me, he said something about they went out with guns one night. They thought they had prowlers back there which would be nuts who would be back there and they went outside yelling you know you better get off our property and they fired some guns in the air <clears throat> excuse me and he said um the you know the second night now after the first night after that he said they came out and raised hell right outside his trailer you know yelling beating their chest stomping the ground you know i guess I guess they were upset with the guns and whatnot. <laughs> and since then, um, yeah, they've messed with him quite a bit. Now, after getting in there with his trailer, you know, there's a spot out his window where they would stand and watch him, watch his trailer. Um, his mother lives back there, not far from his trailer. She has one, maybe a couple hundred feet at most. And they would stand right there in that little chunk of wood line. And he said at the time, it, he thought, well, that's their nest. You know, they had like a little blind. And uh, so they would stand there and just watch 
and watch and watch. And he's got so many pictures of them. You know, clear they're clear pictures, but when he uploads onto YouTube, they're distorted. And he can't figure it out. I can't either, because I'm not technical, but um, but he's shown me, you know, on his laptop, his recordings, on his phone, pictures, and it's just crazy back there. He's got orbs as well. He's got uh, just tons of crazy stuff that goes on back there. Yeah, it's typical for there to be paranormal activity, orbs outside, and Sasquatch activity out in the woods. I wouldn't say all in unison, but within you know the same ch- time frame, whether it's a couple weeks, months, or years. Yeah. Well, they're not slowing down where he's at. Um, you know, he... He hollered at me a couple months ago, you know, Bubba, you need to get down here right now. And I just couldn't at the time. I wanted to, but I guess they were, uh, they were right at the back of the the trailer, you know, pretty much out in the open is how he described it. So it's like, if you want to see them again, come on down now. You know, normally they come and go. They're not right there 100% of the time. But, yeah, uh, they make they make their rounds and uh, they let it be known when they're right outside his place. Yeah, that's pretty uh, cool. I need to find oh, a property owner like that. Well, <laughs> maybe we'll talk about that. Yeah, well, most of the people that I interview and research on their property, you know, I tell them if something happens, call me immediately and like none of them ever call me they always tell me months later oh this this happened it's like okay well oh it came out kind of deal yeah well that's that's pretty cool he gave you that opportunity i think if you spent a couple days there you would definitely see one Mm -hmm. yeah you know sounds like it if If you're finding the the sign to to the woods yeah no i was just gonna say you're finding the sign you guys have seen them you have activity and numerous things. So it's a great place to research and invest your time in. When you go to places well, and you don't find that, it's just hard to stay, especially if you don't even hear them. They don't come out at night when you stay, you know, multiple nights. It's, it's hard to invest on that. So it yeah. sounds like you got a great place to research. I, it, to me, it's mind boggling. I mean, you know, my buddy down south there with the property. You know, he had told me probably about my third trip down to visit with him. You know, he had told me, he said, Bubba, he said, these things are all over the place. You know, on his own, he had found other people posting in Alabama as well, which I had not found at that time. And, uh, you know, but I've since looked them up and it's it's crazy the amount of Bigfoot there must be in this state. Uh, they've got to be just everywhere. They have to be. And how do people not know about them? You know, everyone I talk to, you know, hey, would you like to go with me? You know, and they they laugh at me like, you know, you're out of your mind. These things don't exist. And I just I'm like, there's got to be tons of people here in Alabama that have seen them, but they just won't come forward. You know, like I said, it's different here. You're, You're more apt to get laughed at, I believe, here than other places. Yeah. But. Yeah, that's a shame. Yeah, it is. It really is because I think they need to be protected. You know. Yeah, or, or I mean, least, protected at least from humans. The public spotlight, you know, so that. Uh, yeah. Well, like I said, so they can be protected. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like they don't need our protection, like some type of extinct animal. They need our protection from ourselves, from just de- destroying the forest, and you know, just raising awareness that they're out there so people don't shoot them when they see them that kind of exactly exactly yeah so what do you think the whistle meant when you guys were in the camper i think it was screwing with us you know i told my buddy i said that's got to be a young one because it my belief is it's the young ones that screw with you Mm -hmm. i don't think the older ones have it in their head to bother with us and i think the young ones are you know, like me as a teenager, I was out of my mind. I couldn't get enough entertainment if no matter what it meant, if I get hurt, I'm doing it, you know, and I think it's pretty much the same thing. They're, they're very adventurous. 
And uh, if they think they can get away with screwing with us, they'll do it. That's my belief. Yeah, absolutely. And I've been out with people many times where I hear things clearly and they don't hear it. But I've noticed a trend with certain people. They talk really loud. And people that talk really loud tend to not hear the best. So it could be that or it could be something, I don't know, paranormal. Like some people experience the activity, they hear it, and the other person doesn't. I've heard that too. Yeah. I, I, it's beyond me. I don't understand it. I don't believe in the foo-foo stuff, you know, like that, that maybe Sasquatch speaks, but only one person hears it, you know, on purpose. <laughs> I don't believe in that stuff yet. Mm -hmm. I'm open-minded to all of this, but so far I just don't believe that's the case, even though I experienced it. Yeah. But, Same uh, with the batteries. Like I have the batteries that drain too out in the field, but it's like, okay, I'm going for my home. That's like climate controlled out here to where it's super hot, really cold. And I always notice a difference just when I'm outside, you know, the batteries don't hold up the same. So it's hard to say if, you know, something's going on that's draining the energy or if it's just because you're out, out in the woods. I don't know. But, you know, when I was down at his place, the very first trip where, you know, the camper died and the battery pack died both. Well, what I did was I fired my truck up because it's got an outlet you can plug in. And I had the cords and the adapter, so I plugged it into my truck. I plugged the camper into the truck and I ran the truck. And I mean, I let that thing run for a good hour. So it should have given it some juice. Nothing. I couldn't get a light to come on even. So that was kind of weird. You know, like I said, when I got home, everything worked perfect. I can't explain it. Yeah. But I, I don't think they caused it. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, even if they do that, it's hard to pinpoint it and be like, oh, yeah, it's Bigfoot for sure. But when you're out there and all the strange experiences are happening, you know, yeah. you can't put it past them. Uh, that's the thing. Will we ever know what they can and can't do if they can do anything? You know, mm -hmm. the mind speak is another one. Um, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm leaning a little on that one. I'm, I'm leaning a little towards it. Like there's, there might be something there. I don't yeah, know. I think so too. Just because a lot of times I've wondered to myself, huh? I've, I haven't like heard anything all day and then knock. And I mean, perfect. Yeah knock you know it's like they knew to do that right at that moment well my first trip down south to the guy that's got him on his property you know i'd heard about the mind speak thing you know from the research and so the whole way down that i'm driving you know hour and 15 minutes it was ended up being the whole way down i'm, I'm like talking to bigfoot in my head going all right guys i'm not going to be scared Show yourselves to me. I mean, the whole trip, I'm like, if there's mind speak, we're going to do this. <laughs> and then I ended up seeing one coincidence. But who knows? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Are it's you going stuff. to continue investigating his property? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'll go down again. Not, I mean, we've become friends. So now when I go down, it's just to see him, hang out with him, talk to him and, you know, not necessarily go look for him again. Cause I know they're in there yeah. and he's not, you know, he'll go into the woods, you know, but he's still real cautious about it. I mean, he's real cautious. Mm -hmm. So it's not a guarantee that if I go down there, I'm going to go into the woods again, looking for him. And I know yeah. that. So I just did go to that hang spook out. You, did it spook you seeing them? And do you think about it every day? Absolutely wrecked my head for a good two weeks. Like where my mouth's hanging open and my brain's just trying to wrap around it. It was too, too messed up for me to believe for two weeks. Even though I saw it, experienced it, my brain didn't want to believe. How can these things really be real? And everyone doesn't know about it. If I can see one that easily within 30 minutes of getting to a property, how can they not be real? You know, yes. and, and that that's the mind blowing part is like when you see them, you're like, how, 
how do scientists not know about this? You know, I'm just some average Joe out in the woods. You know, how do they not know about this? How does everybody not know about this? Exactly. You know, I'm, I'm even now, you know, and yes, I do think about that sighting, you know, the face to face quite often, you know, and I am having a hard time understanding, you know, why is it not public knowledge? You know, yeah. you hear stories about maybe our government doesn't uh, doesn't want them out there in the woods. And, you know, a lot of weird stories, but, uh, you know, is the government trying to keep them, keep it quiet? Do they have a hand in it? I don't yeah. know. And it makes sense if there was one here and there in the deepest, most remote forest. But like these things are coming up to people's backyards and literally living on private properties and just roaming the forest and they're everywhere i think people should know i you know i'm spreading the word the best i can but here in alabama you know it gets it gets pretty discouraging the looks you get and people start laughing at me and I'm, i'm just trying to tell them you know hey take a flashlight out your back door you know the ones i know that live in the woods around here you know, I said, every now and then just take a flashlight out your back door and scan the wood line. Look for eyes. And they look at me like you, you're just out of your mind. They're not real. So yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's difficult. It is difficult, but you have to make a fine line between, you know, what is truth? And do I want to lie and tell myself I didn't see it? You know, do you want to live on that, the, the true side or the false side? And as wacky as it sounds, you got to take that leap of faith and just. Yeah, be open with it and honest. I'm there now for sure, hundred yeah. percent. You know, yeah, absolutely. Or we wouldn't be talking right now, <laughs> right? <laughs> so they mainly yeah. came out at night. Is that correct for the property owner? Is that what what he was saying? Yeah, because he was shocked that you guys saw one during the day. <laughs> he was. Now, you know, since he discovered that they're there, that initial introduction he had with them. He's put up cameras and lights and whatnot around his property, and he's trying to record, you know, document. And he's got uh, daytime pictures of them, but they never knew they were out in the open, so to speak. Like, uh, you know, he showed me one picture where they were standing eh, 50 feet from his house. And he said he was outside doing some kind of work, like maybe building a deck or whatnot. I don't remember exactly. So this thing was out in the open looking at them building the deck, say. And uh, one of his cameras captured that. But um, even the picture that the camera captured, if you look at the picture, you could easily overlook this animal standing there. You know, especially if you don't believe in Bigfoot. But when you really look at the picture, you can see this thing standing there. And my God, it was huge. I mean, it was crazy big. Like three times, he went and did a comparison. He went and stood where it was standing and took a picture of that. And a side-by-side comparison, this thing was three times the size of him, at least. And he's not a little guy, you know? I mean, it was just massive. But, you know, it's, it's kind of like, how can it even walk around without you hearing it? That's, that amazes me, too. You know, it's yeah. like just not last night before when I was camping with my buddy, you know, the whistle, the foot stomps, it was all so close. But yet, when you really go to check on it, to s- try to capture it, it's gone, you know, and it's like, how do they move that fast or how did they? pull that off to where it sounded, where it was so close one or the other. I'm not sure which, but it, to me, it's just amazing. They're, they're really elusive. Yeah. And do you think it was waving to you trying to get your attention or trying to see if you could see its hand? When I was a toddler, (laughs) you mean? Yeah. I was like four. It was, it was trying its hardest to wave me outside. Yeah. But, you know, even then, I mean, you know, past that, I was, I was young enough, which I can remember way past being four, believe it or not. But 
I was young enough where I wasn't going out in the yard unsupervised yet. And I remember, you know, past that, like when I was, you know, five, six, seven, eight, et cetera, I would be outside and in the woods around the house constantly and never had any encounters of any kind, you know, and no fear, you know, as a four-year-old, I guess I just kind of, I don't know, thought, I don't know, it didn't bother me, it didn't scare me, really, enough to where I wouldn't want to go outside anymore, it didn't traumatize me, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah, it was more like, what the heck did I see, kind of deal. But what I've researched is, you know, this was the late 60s, and that there are no more in the Keys, they've migrated out, and they're in the Everglades completely now. So, I may have seen the very last one exiting, who knows. (laughs) But, yeah okay well i mean i think that pretty much answers most of my questions unless you wanted to get more into that huge bigfoot you saw walking in the back of the property or i I think you saw a shadow oh um at night you said it was huge Um, i think you had your friend there with, with the thermal i'm not sure if that was that night no no this is my very first trip there is when I got to see one face to face. And it was also during the two nights that I was there. One of those two nights, I don't remember which, um, but yeah, it caught my eye. You know, it, there were, there were the ones to my left. It would have been his right. Um, making all the noise in the wood line. You could hear them in there walking and whatnot, breaking stuff. They were watching us obviously, but out of the corner of my right, um, I caught one walking the other wood line, you know, it was a V or an L, excuse me, an L. And, uh, so I got to see that one and it was just massive, you know, crazy big. Yeah. I'm sure that but, had you guys pretty spooked. Well, he didn't see it cause his back was faced that way, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but I got his attention when it was happening, but he never got to see it. You know, it was back behind his place by that point. He was walking towards the other ones. Ugh. It was just like, that's just too big for me. The one I saw in the creek bed, I don't think was that big. You know, it was about the size of a six foot person. It wasn't like the one I saw walking the wood line. That was pretty scary. Yeah. Yeah, that's terrifying. Well, if you do have any photos or anything you want to send over, feel free to. Just because I know when I post this, people are going to dog me for not asking. Well, the picture I took, you know, like I said, it came out like a blob. But mm-hmm. I've blown it up. And when you really blow it up, you can you can make out some features like an ear in the head. You know, um, I've taken pictures of the hut that's down there. I think I've taken quite a few pictures down there. Um, I was snapping pictures just of the wood line during the day, and I caught, you know, things that could be them peeking out. But the camera I was using back then didn't have a lot of pixels, megapixels. So when you blow them up to really get a good look, it's like, well, there's another blob squatch, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I think that answers most of my questions, and I think you told your encounter yeah. pretty well and explained everything the best you could. It's been a wild ride. More to come, hopefully. Yeah, and um, we'll talk behind the scenes, and you can contact me and share with me whatever you find, and if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Absolutely, I'll do that. Okay. Well, Keith, I'll let you go for now. And I really appreciate you sharing your encounters with me. And it was awesome to hear it. Absolutely. Um, Give me a call after this. Okay. I will. All right, bud. Thanks. All right. Bye. Talk to you later. Bye. Thanks again, Keith, for sharing your encounters and thoughts about the Sasquatch. To me, it sounded a lot like the encounters he had were far away or when it was dark out. Again, I'm not going to criticize anyone's story. 
like I have in the past here and there, just because speculation leads to doubt and I want to remain open-minded. Plus you guys do all the digging for me and let me know if something sounds off in the comments. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna remain open-minded and listen to what people have to say. I think Alabama would be a very active state just because it has a lot of different habitat zones and it's a real pretty area. Who wouldn't want to be there, right? If you guys want to hear Williams part two interview, like I mentioned earlier in the video, be sure to tune in next Sunday. And I will also be releasing a new film from the Killing Fields farm area. So be on the lookout for that guys. It's going to be awesome and I'm so excited to put this film together. But yeah, back to Williams interview. That was a really good interview and he gave such a good description and he was so kind. So if you guys haven't heard part one, go back and listen to it. It's a really good story and um, I'll post it up at the end of this video on the end screen. But yeah, check it out guys. All right, thank you everyone for watching and it really means a lot. Thank you so much, thank you, thank you, thank you. Be safe, take care everyone.